This presentation will cover the basic signal flow in an Apache Labs Anand G2. Specifically, the focus will be, will be on the received signal path from a user perspective. Note that the idea for this presentation is not to be rigorous or too technically detailed into the weeds. That level of in-depth coverage can be found in various sites on the web. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. The NNG2 Amateur Radio Transceiver is a modern direct conversion software-defined transceiver that covers the HF bands plus 6 meters. Note that when we say the NNG2, we really also mean it's pairing with software-defined radio software, Thetis, in my case. Thetis is the one that I find very useful, very powerful. So the transceiver utilizes the Saturn FPGA board with integrated DSP processing and a Raspberry Pi processor. The NNG2 is designed to work with several client software-defined radio apps, like we just mentioned. The data is streamed by a 1 Gbps Ethernet cable. A very popular SDR app, as we mentioned, is Thetis, and that's what I'm going to cover here. It connects to the receiver, data streams, and provides further signal processing to reduce noise, select signals of interest, and demodulate them. So let's go ahead and get started. This is uh, the RX or receive block diagram in simplified form. This one actually comes out of the Anand 7000 manual, but it should be very similar, if not the same, for the purposes of this presentation with the Anand G2. The signal comes from the antenna and after going through the A to D converter and the digital down converter, it goes via ethernet cable over into Thetis. Again, this is where it goes into the PC and Thetis is the software running on the PC. Here, the first software action that takes place is the wideband noise filter, which removes impulse type noise. This is early in the flow graph to limit the impact those, no, those impulses can have on later on on the processing. Two algorithms, NB and NB2, can be selected on the console. So if we look over here, we can actually see what that, that sounds like. Let's go ahead and unmute. That's the signal without any noise reduction. That's NR. NR2. Note the signal is a little bit bigger here, so let's go ahead and make that a bit wider. It's a weak signal, but we can see the effect. Again, this is without it. We just coincided with the dead spot. Okay. So then after this, we note that the pan adapter waterfall display processing comes right off of the data stream at this point. So what we see on the screen is actually coming from here and also on the gauges. Next is the notched bandpass filter. A bandpass filter with user settable bandwidth limits the signal to the bandwidth required for the current mode. It also implements any manual notch filtering to remove interfering signals. The bandwidth is set by the mode selection and can be adjusted on the console as we just did a little bit ago. After that, we have the spectral noise filter. The spectral noise Blanker or SNB provides another algorithm to remove impulse type noises. Let's see if we can use it here. We can see that the higher pitch in the voice seems to be accentuated. So that's the SNB. After that, we go to the RX Equalizer. RX Equalizer can be accessed up here on the menu bar under Equalizer, and we see it right here. It's a 10-channel graphic equalizer that provides an option to equalize the audio response of the radio using three or 10 bands 
across the audio spectrum. So this is set to 10 band right here, and if we enable it right there, we can go ahead and try that out. So we'll go ahead and say... Okay, so that would be the RX equalizer. There's also a TX equalizer, but again, we're just focusing on the receive stream here. Next is very familiar to radio amateurs, and that's the automatic gain control or AGC. This limits the signal level of received signals. It keeps signals approximately constant above a user set threshold. And what we can do here is we see how we set the AGC. I'm going to go ahead and hold down the mouse with this little bar and you see that the lever is going up and down, very interactive. So what I like to do is I like to put it right north of the average noise level to get a little bit of noise, but not much. Notice also that the AGC gain slider here changes as you move that bar interactively. So you can do it either of two ways to adjust your AGC. After that, we go over to the auto notch filter. The automatic notch filter will automatically attempt to remove constant carrier signals from the audio passband. Don't want to get too much into the weeds on this one, but suffice it to say that you can go ahead and select, for example, a manual notch filter option here, and you can position your notch over one of these. Uh, let me go ahead and do that, C2. And you can position your notch over one of these signals right there, and it'll go ahead and notch it out. You do it like this. You drag it across, you put it right over it, you right click on it to set some options like the width of it, or delete it altogether. So that's the manual notch option. And automatic over here does the same thing, but in an automatic manner. So let's see if we can find the signal again here. I think those fellows, yeah, they're still here. Let's go here. And if we go, well, we have to go there to them. And then if we say A and F and unmute. <laughs> It's always colder underneath the vehicle. And unless the motor's warm, then it's not so bad. Then it's like a little rainstorm. So the ANF will go ahead and remove these constant signals that you want to remove to notch out. And it'll do it automatically. Next is Probably my favorite one here is the noise reduction. There are two noise reduction algorithms available, NR and NR2, and uh, these attempt to preserve the signal content but reduce the noise content. They do a great job getting rid of background band noise. So if we do this, go ahead and go back one, and if we go here, it wouldn't actuate, so I'm well, here in the bench, and I pop it open, and I'm looking at the wire coming off the coil. And this thing's stretched really hard, like a, like a guitar string. And it broke right there before the pin. And I thought, well, obviously a robot made this, or somebody, and, and they just kept the tension on the wire too strong. So I, I you know, took a coil off of it, and re-soldered it, put it back in, and worked. And I thought, you know, is this, this, is, this is what I need to do is repair fuel injection relay. Okay, so that's the noise reduction. Uh, my favorite is NR2, but NR also has an, an effect that might just fit the bill for your problem. Last one is the CW peaking filter. <clears throat> this is an audio peaking filter, or APF, available, available for CW modes to further limit the bandwidth to the signal of interest. So that's a brief overview of what we have over here with the Theta software. And again, uh, we can 
reduce the bandwidth over here or increase it depending on what the, they're transmitting at. We don't want to miss out on data, but we want to trim it so we don't have to be getting uh, spurious uh, signals from outside of that band. And we have the NR2 NB, sorry, the noise reduction, the noise blanker, automatic notch filter, spectral noise blanker, and the multi-tracking notch filter. Just in passing, when we say multi-tracking, once you set these uh, notch filters, they'll go ahead and continue in the same place as you scroll across the, the spectrum. So it's very useful. And uh, again, it's just more uh, signal processing capabilities uh, that are included in Theta software. Well, hopefully that was useful. This uh, concludes the video.